Praise the Lord. How are the classes? All right. Okay, so before we go to um, qu um, questions, um, I, I, I just want to ask if we still have um, contributions, you know, maybe one or two things that we didn't share um, in the class that we'd just like to um, um, share. And please, the other microphone. Don't sing. I think it's your turn today. Please help us with Mike. Brafala. Okay, there is always consequence for our action and inaction. What you do, what you don't do, there is always a result. Your result card will be given to you in a short time. If we fail to train our, our children and uh, they decide to do whatever they like, you will eventually see the results after some few years when they grow up a little, they will start exhibiting those things you've been, uh, the failure of the parents, they'll start exhibiting those traits. And it will bring disgrace and shame to the parents and to the community. Uh, when we look around our community, what we see, the unrest that we are experiencing, is the failure of some parents. They fail to train their children in the way of the Lord, they fail in their responsibilities. And the, uh, the outcome is obvious when we, we see children misbehaving here and there. We talked about uh, a particular child whose parents uh, failed to, to raise him up in the way of the Lord. The boy eventually gone to uh, uh, taking hard drugs and eventually killed the mother because the mother failed to train the child when he was small. And there are also examples we, we came across during our class that when children are, are younger, it is the best time to train them. And when we fail in that responsibility, we'll be the one that will be disappointed. The scriptures also talks about there are consequences for choosing, making, uh, choosing a decision either to, to choose wisdom or choose foolishness. You will bear the consequence. There's always consequence for everything. Either you choose wisely or you choose wrongly. Thank you. Um, please let me give Sister Peace. Sister Peace, share with us what either you learned from class or your week of reading. Brian Ma, you know I will come to you. Hallelujah. Prosper. Ah, where is Emmanuel? Is Emmanuel moving? He has run out. Okay. Prosper, all right. And what I... And my, my, what I learned from chapter one of Proverbs is, and the wise man listen to instruction, why the fool don't take, don't listen, and the wise man listen to calm people um, correction like when they keep the wise person correcting him, he listen and understand. Why the foolish one does not listen? He feel like he knows everything. Mm. And that's a lesson for us, you know. Um, when, when, if we design well, rather, and we, f we see that we are usually antagonistic to corrections, to instructions, then we are towing the path of foolishness. So if, even though we don't like the venue, 
or the avenue that that wisdom is coming from, or that word, or that instruction, the first response is even to listen, not, you know, just, you know that pepper that used to pepper your body, that thing that used to do your body when, uh -huh. so if, we, that's what that place is saying, that a wise man will increase in learning. They didn't, they didn't say when uh, he listens to another wise person, just listening. The person, will, in fact, you even know how to retort back, you know, when you actively listen. Brother, prosper. Let us prosper by what you want to say, tell us. Bro, Emmanuel, of course. Praise the I Lord. Speak, and then, bro, Sam, Simeon. <laughs> I learned that the beginning, the, what was it called? <laughs> Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. I learned that wisdom gives us, make us, make us understanding. I learned that wisdom makes us to be honest. <laughs> I also learned that wisdom makes us to be successful. Okay, yes, that's Also, true. wisdom makes us to be wise. Mm, you know I was going to ask you, so you're ready for me. I'm happy that you're ready for me. All wisdom right. makes us to be wise in everything. Okay. Wisdom also makes us know the truth of everything. Mm. When you have wisdom, you know the mm. truth of everything. Whatever you see, you know it by your wisdom. Thank okay. you. All right, so before we move to Bro Emmanuel, I want us to talk a bit about um, the fear of God being the beginning of wisdom. Um, does anybody want to shed light on that? Uncle Bayo, please let me give Uncle Bayo the, after Uncle Bayo, ah, Bro, that for you've spoken, I will give your wife. What is inside you will transfer to her. So that many. <laughs> yes, but I will still let you speak. Okay. Um, you discover that that particular sentence or the verse, uh, the fear of the Lord's beginning, of, appears several times in, in Proverbs. Yeah. At least I've seen like three already. Uh, um, okay, and if you look at it, um, from the time of Moses, um, when God gave Moses the laws, he instructed the Israelites to hang the law on their neck mm -hmm. so that when they are Many where they go, they already have the law and they can memorize it, they know it, and all of that. Now, when you say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, that is um, where wisdom actually starts. Mm -hmm. you, you don't, you don't, uh, this is when you fear God, you can, you can actually fulfill all those laws. Mm -hmm. And that's where, the, when Jesus was now summarizing the old law, he said, fear, um, he said, like, um, not so right into two. It was not so right into two. Like, um, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Then also love God. Those two things will make you to be righteous. Like, mm -hmm. you just be living a life of, of no sin. If you can obey those two things, just those things. You don't even need to cram all the laws. You don't even need to cram all. But once you love God and you love your uh, um, human beings, you will not want to commit any sin. And that's just it. Now, fear of the Lord. The moment you fear God, no matter how it is, you already, you already have the knowledge that this one is evil, this one, this one is right. But if you fear God, you will not want to do it. I think I overheard in Brother for the last class that um, if you fear God, you will not want to cheat your neighbors. You know that somebody has worked out to gain something. And you, not, you will look at it, ah, this thing, somebody has worked out to gain this thing. For me to not go and steal that thing, I'll be like, no. I can't do it because it's, it's not even right for me to even forget about the fact that you are spiritual. Morally, it's not right. You know? Morally, it's not right. Not talk of not putting in spir um, spiritual things to it that God has said, don't do this. Because you fear God. You know that God is supreme and you fear him. You will not want to commit that sin. If you see your neighbor um, um, prospering, you will not jealous over, over the person because you fear God, you know? Yeah. So, so that consciousness is already there. And that's why they say the fear of the Lord is the beginning. But that's where it starts. Every other thing is under it. It starts from there. Pastor, yeah, I'll come back to Pastor. Can you read that? Yeah. Okay, as Brother Bayo said, um, the fear of the Lord, I was just thinking to myself that what does that really mean? What does it mean to fear God? I, I, one way that it's coming to me is, if I said, do you fear police? Because we fear police when you are driving, you have taken time to know the 
the, the rights and the wrongs so that police will not catch you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So fearing somebody means you, you take time to know that person. So it's not just that I'm fe I fear you, I fear you, I fear you. It, that one is foolish fearing. Fearing that we're talking about here is the fear it, and about God is healthy fear. That fear does not make it, ah, no, 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 I don't want to do anything with that person. No, we're talking about the fear that makes you want to know the person. You are knowing the person so that you know the things that the person likes, the things the person does not like, the things that the person has said do, the things he has said don't do. That is what we're talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not just one fear of God that is up there in the, in the heavens. Like I said in my group, I said, you know, foolishness is follow come with us when they gave birth to all of us. Foolishness followed us too. It, co it came with us. So we naturally, we remain like that. Something happened to my son recently in school, and he was saying, uh, Newton's first law of motion. He was on a um, family WhatsApp group. Oh. He said, Newton's first law of motion uh, says this one. So if something has not happened, they wouldn't have taken my son. I said, ah, for this kind of talk, you are bringing first law of motion. So in our own situation too, Newton's first law of motion says everything will continue as they are except an external force acts upon it. We will continue in our foolishness, except we run after wisdom. And one of the things that we saw in the book of wisdom is that the scripture says wisdom will stand on top of one place and is always shouting, shouting, because you know, you people are foolish. You people don't have wisdom. You will waste your life like this. Come and learn. So, and I was asking in my group also, how do we buy wisdom? He said, come and buy without money. Is it not? Yeah. You buy with time. We want to know God. You want to take time to study about God. That is what it means to fear God. Fearing God means you know God. You know what he wants, what he does not want. You know how he operates, how he, how he thinks. And if we know those things, that thing that Brabayo is saying that you will not go and steal another person, you, you are not just stealing because you fear God. Because You are not stealing because you understand how God reasons. You understand his life. Amen. Mr. Mm. So Loli. Praise God. So I wanted to, <laughs> I want to respond to that, the fear of wisdom. So it means that it is the fear of God that is where wisdom that is the foundation. So if you want to, no matter how far you have gone, for us to know that you are wise, we have to trace it back to the beginning. And that beginning, anybody that will say has wisdom, in the person, we must be able to see the fear of God as the foundation of such. We can look at it even from the life of the person that said that to us, that Solomon. If he was able to give that, divide this child, and people say, oh, this man is wise. So at the bedrock of wisdom is where we'll find the fear of God. So you can't say that you are wise outside the confines of the Lord. You can't, so you can't choose... Um, um, what was it called? Brother Emmanuel, do you want to share with us? Okay. So you can't say um, you, are, you are wise and then your wisdom can't be found in the law of the Lord, can't be found as statues for the Lord. That is not wisdom. It must be rooted in the law of God. So you can't, um, oh, um, this is how they are doing. You are not wise. That's not the definition of them. That's way that you are doing your business must be rooted in the law of the Lord. Thank you. I'm Star Debbie. Before Bro Emmanuel. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I just want to add to this uh, fear of the Lord. Uh, scripture says that to fear the Lord is to depart from evil. I remember when I was still, I think that question, that what does it really mean to fear the Lord? And a day I stumbled on the scripture that says to fear the Lord is to depart from evil. And like Pastor Fumi said, that if you really, uh, truly fear God, you want to know what are the things that God likes, what are the things that God does not like. So, that, you know, sometimes we can be tempted to say, okay, we know, everybody knows that stealing is evil. Everybody knows that lying is evil. You know, but there are some subtle things in our lives that might not be stealing, might not be killing, kidnapping, and they are still evil. That is why we should have a culture of always going through the Bible. Is the manner that God has given us wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare 
and equip his people to do every good work. So we should have a culture of going through the scripture. Every Ma, the, what I learned from my class is that what the did you wise... learn personally when you read? Did you read it this week? Yes. All right. Awesome. Oh, yeah. What you learned this week? What I learned in my class is that the, the wise man always takes correction. Why the foolish man do not take correction? Another one. And another one. Okay. Bros, please give Bros me on the. Ma, I'm coming. Okay, all right. Being lazy. Being lazy make, uh, will make you poor. If you, be, if you are a lazy man, you always be poor. Okay. So if we are lazy, also to us reading the Bible, yeah. we will also be poor spiritually. Ah, no. No. Yes. It's the same. Okay. Why? You, you, you. <laughs> People that work hard always get richer. Yes. Yeah, so if you work hard at reading your Bible, you get richer. Yes. Yes, that's what. Yes, it's not far fetched. Ma, even you when you work hard, if you work hard, if you know how to wisdom, ma, you still be poor. But it's the, the wisdom you get it from the Bible. Yeah. And so if you don't work hard at reading and studying your Bible, you won't make that. You won't get that riches. Okay. Do you have any other question? All right, Sister Ruth, before Bro Simeon. So, bro, Emmanuel, next week we'll start from what you learned during the week before we go to what you learned. So remember, before, so that you're not opening your Bible. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, what I learned, learned in the book, the proverb that we read, <laughs> is that in everything that we do, we should some we should be we should le, we should not rely in our own understanding but the wisdom from the Lord that a foolish person a wise person is always ready to learn and take when they, whenever they correct the person you take from there and learn more but a foolish person always gets angry mm -hmm. and not learn not see what yes, what is wrong in what they're saying yeah. like some of us will feel that we are wise. Like, there's in a place in the Bible that Jesus said a man should walk, should eat where he walk. But some people translate it and say, if he, he has, because you are walking there, you carry something that you without the person's permission, you will not feel that. She just say a man should eat where he walk without knowing that that is foolishness. The person think he's wise, but it's clearly foolishness. That's all. Okay. Workshop. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to start from uh, where you said uh, if you are given to study, it's automatic poverty. Yeah. So it's that simple. If you are studying God's word, it will encourage you to yes. find a work to do. Yeah. And when you are hard working, then you'll, you'll have riches. So, uh, when we talked about the fear of the Lord, I read that part in that proverb that uh, those who fear the Lord does not fear any other thing. They are bold like a lion. Meaning that uh, if you fear the Lord, you do what pleases God always. Your ways are pleasing to the Lord. You are not afraid of anything because your ways are, are just pleasing to God. You have nothing to fear. You are not, there's no, you are not doing kidnapping. You are not doing yahoo, yahoo. You are not, you know, you are doing your genuine business. And you are studying God's word. You are doing what the Lord wants you to do. You have no reason to fear anything. You don't even have to fear the economy. Because definitely you have, God will bless you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in rounding, okay, Rabbi, then, then we'll round up. Just to add, um, Particular place I discovered that Proverbs, Proverbs 22 says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads to, uh, to death. It's also stated again in, in, in Proverbs 16 25, the same, same verse. 
I mean, like the same sentence, like that. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. The repeated same. Like, jo- everything just the same. Repeated twice. Now, um, that's an emphasis. That's why it was repeated. Yeah. Um, and the, the writer of Proverbs actually wants us to know that there's always a way that seems right to man. Yeah. When uh, part of me was talking yeah. about the fact that yeah. uh, we are born to be foolish. In fact, we are born foolish. Yeah. It's only when we now try to encounter God, understand him, that when we know better. Yeah. There's always a way that seems right. Ask anybody on the street. He will tell you, ah, I'm going this way. This is my way I'm going. No, that, man, nobody can tell me otherwise. Yeah. It's only when you now have better understanding, you say, ah, this particular way is not the right way for me. Now let me turn. And go the other way. And that's what I'm talking about repentance now. Repentance, as we are taught, is, is making a U-turn. From the, you are going on a particular road before. You now turn. Making a U-turn and go back to the right way you're supposed to go. So there's always a way for us. Even if you are looking for money, to, um, like to, to find money, there's always a way to find money. There's always a way. You can find money in different ways. But are you doing it the right way? That's the question. So, uh, we should always have it at the back of our mind that when the Bible is say, saying that there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the hand leads to destruction, it now calls for us to actually go and understand God better so that he can teach us the way. So that let me talk about uh, the word of God is, is, is instruction. It's for us to learn instruction, doctrine, and every other thing that God wants us to understand. And that's why the word of God is there for us. It's a guide. We don't... It's like, it, in fact, as a human being, when you are born on this earth, you are clueless. You don't even know what to do. But when the word of God works on you, it makes you do better. It makes you do the right thing that you need to do. And that's what God is expecting of us. At the end of the day, we are supposed to be living a perfect life. It might not be perfect now, but that is the goal. So the more we study the word of God, the more we allow God to work on us, it makes us better and live a righteous life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome um, contribution. You know, the theme of the book of Proverbs is wisdom. And you would wonder that how foolish are we that someone keeps repeating, get wisdom, get wisdom, get wisdom. You see, the person who, are, who has started this journey of being wise is to first realize the places where they are foolish. Like someone, um, a, a farmer, the way the rain is important to us is not the way it's important to the farmer. It is food on that person's table. It is harvest. It is for us. Maybe it's vibes and all of those other things. Cool, cool the boss. That but for the farmer, it is life. So the moment you realize where you are foolish, you've started gaining wisdom. The moment you realize that you are foolish, but if you see mm, them, there's this path, it's not speaking to me. This other path is speaking to me. We must really be foolish for, as in, like I was, I didn't know how to go about it when we started reading it. Ah, what's up? What, what are we going to learn? But as in, you will find the same theme over and again. Um, wisdom is sound. Buy it with your money. Hear him. Next two verse here. Yeah. And this is from we, um, Solomon or his family member that knows the importance of um, wisdom. I want us to just close our eyes and pray just um, before time. We'll take it next week, bro, Michael. We'll take it next week. I'm sorry. Um, so I want us to just pray over uh, over ourselves that you will make me know wisdom in my in, from my innermost. You know, Psalms is from Psalms fifty one that says so. In my innermost being, you will make me know wisdom in the places where I am foolish, in the places where I'm not making sound decision, even though it seems I'm prospering there. Show me to me. Show me to me, show me, show me to me in the name of Jesus. Show me where I need to make adjustments. Show me where I need to come into your commandments. Show me where I need to lean on your strength. Show me all the ways I'm leaning on my own understanding. Show me all the ways that I think I am important in my heart. Make me know wisdom. Make me know wisdom in the name of Jesus.